Hello everybody and welcome to an updated version of the Foreign Currency Exchange video uh, on how foreign currency exchange impacts net export spending for two nations. One thing to be aware of is that when you see two different values for foreign currency versus American dollars or any two nations currencies for that matter, you have to be mindful that any business that engages in importing or exporting of goods and services from other countries has to actually first buy currency for that country and then use the currency to buy the goods and services. All the exchange rate is, is effectively the price of one nation's currency in terms of the other. However, when you see steady changes in exchange rates over extended periods of time, like a few months, this ends up having an impact on the price of exported goods to foreign customers and ultimately affects the net export spending of both nations because of the relative value of the currency. Now the values of these currencies shift a lot because of supply and demand. Tourism, trade, politics, trade deals and so forth are going to very strongly impact these things along with the buying and selling of bonds from one nation to another. There's a lot of things involved in here that makes these values a little bit volatile, but typically there's going to be general trends over time of gains and losses and values of one currency relative to the other. Now, first let's talk about how do you convert from one currency to another. It's a ratio and proportion method, and it's just that simple. And we're going to talk about these in terms of single goods and services. You start with the price of a particular good in the home currency. That's the currency of the nation where the product is manufactured. And then you talk about the, uh, ex the export currency, which is the uh, pardon me, currency of the nation where the product is being shipped to. You're going to have an exchange rate, which will state the price or the value of one nation's currency in terms of the other. And you have to make a ratio out of it. Some of you all will recognize this as a factor label box. You start with the price in the home currency. You make a ratio of the exchange rate. Multiply by what it says about the exchange rate for the export currency. Divide by what it says for the exchange rate for the home currency. That gives you the price in terms of the export currency. Now, not everybody likes the factor label box because it's an invisible number one here. And so I've gone ahead and I've made a ratio and proportion version for those who are more comfortable with that. Be very careful about position of short symbols, what they look like, and if there are two decimals or zero. It matters a ton. If you fail to format currency correctly, you lose points because formatting is just as much important as the actual numbers themselves. Watch out. Pay attention. Now, here's an example. So most initially we have an exchange rate that says 100 Japanese yen is worth 80 U.S. cents or 0 0.80 U.S. dollars. But later on, some time passes, a few months pass, and as a result, 100 Japanese yen is now worth 95 U.S. cents. And the question is, how would this change in the relative value of the two currencies impact the net export spending of both nations? To figure this out, we're going to use a little bit of logic, reasoning, and mathematics. And the logic comes from using a product that we will call a representative agent. We will select one product from the United States that is exported a lot to Japan. In this case, furniture. The price of a desk made at an office furniture company in North Carolina, 500 U.S. dollars and zero cents. At the same time, we'll also select a product made in Japan, like consumer electronics that are exported to the United States, so a cell phone made in Japan for 22,500 yen. That's the price of each nation's exported good in their home currency. Notice the dollar sign is an S with one vertical split and it always has two decimals. Notice the yen symbol is a capital Y with two horizontal splits and there are no decimals. If you end up with decimals when calculating yen, make sure you're round to the nearest whole unit. If you get more than two decimals when you're calculating dollars or less than two, remember you might have to put some zeros if you have no decimals or one decimal there. And if you have more than two, you have to round to the nearest second decimal place or nearest penny. Please recall your rules of rounding and how they work. Now, let's start with the United States. It's always best to start one country at a time, older rate, newer rate, compare the price changes. 500 US dollars and zero cents times 100 yen divided by 0 0.80 dollars. The dollar signs cancel. 500 divided by 0 0.8 times 100 is going to be 62,500 yen. Now, time passes, and then the dollar is now worth 0 0.95, uh, 100 yen is worth 0 0.95 dollars. Notice the yen is worth more in terms of the dollar than it was before, or you could say the dollar is worth less in terms of the yen because it takes more dollars to buy 100 yen. 500 US dollars times 100 yen divided by 0 0.95 yen, you have to do some rounding here, 52,632 yen. I want you to notice that the price of that desk drops by almost 900 yen 
as a result of the yen gaining value in terms of the dollar. Since the yen buys more dollars, it takes fewer yen to buy the desk. But this doesn't apply just to the desk. This means any product made in the United States exported to Japan, like matcha green tea, like rice, like wooden chopsticks, like paper, like fully assembled automobiles, like fully assembled construction equipment, like heavy duty machinery and aircraft parts and fully assembled aircraft, is now cheaper to Japanese customers. And so this is going to have an impact on the U.S. net export spending. Remember the law of demand states that there's something you normally buy and the price goes down, you buy more of it. Because American exported products are cheaper to Japanese customers, they will buy more U.S. exports. The United States will have an increase in net export spending, which means an increase in total spending and therefore an increase in U.S. GDP. So even though the dollar is worth a little less in terms of the yen, it actually helps the U.S. gain more exports and so that's a good thing. Now, for Japan, the effect is the exact opposite. This cell phone costs 22,500 yen. The initial exchange rate says 100 yen is 80 U.S. cents. So 0.8 times 22,500 divided by 100. The yen symbols cancel. Our answer is dollars and cents. $180 and zero cents. Time passes. The yen gains value. 100 yen is now worth 95 U.S. cents. 22,500 yen times 0 0.95 divided by 100 yen. The yen cancels. The answer is in dollars, rounding to the nearest second decimal place. You get $213.75. Yikes. By virtue of this seemingly small shift in exchange rates, that single cell phone there is now $33.75 more expensive than it was before. But guess what? It's not just that particular product. It's any consumer electronics made in Japan, any automobile parts made for various Japanese cars made in Japan, any type of media such as anime and uh, manga made in Japan, any type of specialized products like, uh, pardon me, green wasabi root and stuff like that that they export to the United States, any product made in Japan is now more expensive to American customers. Law of demand states, if there's something you normally buy and it's more expensive, you buy less of it. So there's going to be a decrease in Japan's net export spending from one of its biggest customers, the U.S., which means Japan's total spending decreases, which means Japan is going to have a decrease in GDP. And so that's amazing to think about. Now, a couple of things I want to warn you all about. Don't get hung up on the notion of gain or lose value. It's the in terms of that matters. When the dollar loses value in terms of the yen, what that means is American products are cheaper to Japanese customers and therefore the U.S. sells more product to Japan. So a loss of value of the dollar versus the yen is good for the United States because our net export spending increases, our total spending in GDP increases, and coming up next in this unit, the aggregate demand curve always shifts to the right when any part of total spending increases significantly. So the United States will have a shift to the right for the AD curve. Now for Japan, it's the exact opposite. When the yen gains value in terms of the dollar, it means Japanese products are more expensive to American customers and therefore Japan has a drop in net export spending. When net export spending decreases, it's part of the total, there's a decrease in total spending, which means a decrease in GDP for Japan. And Japan has an AD curve too. When total spending decreases, their AD curve shifts to the left. Again, the issue is not the gain or loss, it's the in terms of. Is it cheaper or more expensive to foreign customers? That's what you have to think about so you don't get steered in the wrong direction. Now class, let's be mindful of something and that is that nobody wins a trade war. The United States largest trading partners, top seven for exports, meaning customers that buy goods we make, Canada, Mexico, China, Japan, United Kingdom, Germany. Imports, meaning countries we buy products that manufacture and they send to us. China number one, Mexico number two, Canada number three, Japan, Germany, and South Korea again in the United Kingdom. Same seven countries, biggest importers and exporters with respect to the United States. Class, this trade war is bad news, especially when it concerns China, because look at the amount of imports and exports we buy. A lot of American consumers are being hurt by the tariffs because Chinese products we buy are more expensive to us, and a lot of Chinese businesses and employees are being hurt. But the same is true for the United States. A lot of American farmers have been hurt because of big cuts and orders of massive amounts of soybeans we grow. China is our biggest export market for soybean farmers, and it has been devastating to soybean growers in the Midwest and the Southeast. Folks, nobody wins a trade war. You need to find the lines of diplomacy, but don't start throwing tariffs around. Right now, Trump and, and Xi are engaging in a pissing contest, and as an economist, it's an anathema to me. 
Stick to the diplom diplomacy. You want to talk tough to each other, talk tough to each other, but don't start messing around with people's paychecks, man. That ain't right. But the whole thing here is we don't live in a vacuum. We're not self-sufficient, and it's better for everybody when we trade. The Roman Empire, the old Chinese Empire, the Empire in Mali that King Mata Musa led, those empires were largely peaceful because different parts of them traded with each other, and these trade connections helped foster better relationships with people. People get along better when they trade with each other versus if they try to hoard and not trade with each other. Let's be mindful of this. Thank you very much, and have a good afternoon. I appreciate y'all's time. Let's see if